Hey everyone, and welcome to The Bridge. This is the show where we bridge you from Sunday to Sunday and bridge God's word from our head to our heart, and we apply what we learn in Sunday's message in our real lives today. Today I have with me a special guest, two special guests in fact, Chantel, welcome back, Hello. and Isla, welcome to The Bridge. So Hello. Chantel, can you introduce yourself? I'm Chantel Custodio, and um, this is my daughter, Isla. Um, we started coming to Covenant when this one was about nine months old, eight months, nine months old. Nice. And Isla, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Isla, and I love gymnastics. I'm a Girl Scout, and I practice piano with Pastor Matt. That's awesome. Isla is one of the best gymnasts I think I've ever seen. It's amazing to see. It's such a little body, but she's so tough and so strong, and I've seen her do many tricks, which is pretty impressive. So thank you both for being here. It's so excited to have you. Isla is also the older sister of Weston, so you guys remember... Uh, the Tonight Show this morning, this afternoon, whatever it was with Matt and Weston. Um, so what did you think about your brother on that show? Um, he was a very funny. I liked when he fell asleep. <laughs> Weston always does make us smile and, and make us laugh. So, Well, if you guys remember, this Sunday, Pastor Danny gave a message on lost things. Do you remember, the, Isla, do you remember what things were lost and people were looking for? Mm-hmm. Um, in the first story, um, the sheep were, the sheep went lost, mm -hmm. and um, then the coin, and then um, the boy. Nice. So we had a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost boy. So I'm going to start, I'm going to actually read some of the parable. So we're in Luke chapter 15, and I'm going to start with verse 3, and just read the first of those, the parable of the lost sheep. So it says, so he told them this parable, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go and find the one that's lost. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends, his neighbors, and he says to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And we had three stories like that about lost things, lost sheep, lost coins, lost boy, or lost son. So I'll ask Chantel first, what was something that stuck out to you when Danny was preaching? What was one of the, the highlights of the message for you? Well, other than the interesting facts about sheep and how they can get paralyzed, yeah. um, there are two things that really stuck out to me. The one was when Pastor Danny said that the way we view others shapes our heart. And... The more I thought about that, I'm like, yeah, that's really true. Mm. Um, and then the other thing he said is that we miss out on God's treasures when we try to squeeze him into our finite capacity and mm. in perspective. Mm. So God has an infinite capacity and an infinite perspective, way different than ours. And sometimes he wants to give us something so cool or he wants us to treasure something so special. And instead we pick something that's not so special and we want to hold on to that or treasure that as yep. well. That is a good perspective. What we put our heart on is, is very important what we focus on. How about you, Isla? Was there something that stuck out to you during the message yeah. on Sunday? Yeah. I liked the story about the woman who searched for all over her lost coin, and when she found it, she was rejoicing, and she was very happy, and I can relate to that. You can relate to that? Mm -hmm. So is there something that you've lost that you were able to track down at some point? Mm, I lost a stuffed baby panda that my friend gave to me. When we mm. tried to get it, it was gone. So my mom ordered, um, bought me a new one off Amazon. Um, and I was afraid that um, my friend would be upset because I lost her gift. Mm. But she did not um, like um, the panda. So she gave it to me and she didn't care that I lost it. She just knew that it would make me happy. Mm, that was really nice of her. That was a great attitude and a great perspective, I think. How did you feel when you went back to, to find that panda and you couldn't find it? I felt very sad. Very sad? So and puzzled because we saw it and we went to go get it and we couldn't find it. And it mm. like, just disappeared. Yeah, sometimes we're looking for something and it should be right there. And mm. we're like, where did it go? How did it feel? And like you said, you feel sad. You feel upset. You feel, I feel frustrated sometimes. I'm like, come on, I just had this. Where did I put it down? I'll lose my glasses. And it's pretty tough because I don't see very well without them. And I'm kind of feeling around the house to try to find my glasses. And it makes me very excited when I find them because then I can actually see other things again too more clearly. But yeah, that's that's not a good feeling when we lose when we lose things. Did you ever think of that from, from God's perspective? Does God ever lose things or get sad? when something is lost? Mm, yeah. I think he gets sad when maybe 
someone who worshipped him did not worship him anymore. Mm. So someone who used to follow God decided they didn't want to follow him anymore. I think that would make him really sad. And I think well, hmm, that's a that's a very good one. Thanks, Isla. That's that's wow. Um, yeah. What do we do when we? Did you ever know anyone who used to follow God and doesn't want to follow him anymore? No. No. How about you, Chantal? Have you ever known anybody like that? Um, I've known people who have really wrestled with their faith, people who mm. used to be strong in their faith, and then they go through something, and it really shakes them, and they question everything. Mm. And I, I don't know anybody who's ever l- left their faith completely, mm. but yeah, I've seen people really struggle. Yeah, I think it's it's very disappointing, too, sometimes, too, when you see, when you see people struggling to believe. And sometimes a, a bad event might happen in their life or something, and they're like, how could God let that happen? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it really shakes their, their faith in God. Um, I think that's one thing. That these kind of situations are perhaps things that parables like this can help us with or help us deal with, right? Because one thing is good to know is that God, Pastor Danny reminds us God is good all the time, right? You know, how, how does he say it? I love God is good. Oh. Time. And all the time, God is good. That's right. I think that's a good reminder for all of us because we need to remember that no matter how the situation appears, God is good. And in the parable, when we talked about the lost sheep and the shepherd, so who is God in that parable? Who's representing God in that parable? Do you want to answer that? Who's God in the, the parable about the sheep and the shepherd? You can. I can answer. Mommy can answer. All right. Well, Chantel. Um, the shepherd is representative of God in that parable. Mm. And we're the sheep. So it's pretty cool to know that God would leave 99 behind to find the one that is lost, to make sure that all 100 are safe. So I think even when we're struggling and we're doubting, I think it's good because we can talk with God and we can say, hey God, I'm doubting, I'm questioning, what's going on? Can you help me? Can you find me? I feel lost. And God is willing to come after us and help us do that. And I think that's, I think that's a really good thing to remember um, and a really good thing to focus on when we think about God, God's goodness and God's character, I think is an important thing, um, important thing as well. Um, one of the key points for the message for me, and this is one, it was a little technical thing that Pastor Danny said at the end. He said our relationship with God is not a transactional relationship, meaning if I do this, he does that. And if he does this, I'll do that. That's more how we interact with one another as people. Like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Or you give me $100 and I'll give you this new video game or this new iPad or whatever it is. Uh, that's kind of how we deal with one another. But God's economy is very different and he wants mm-hmm. us to trust him. And I think that's an important thing to know, one, that he's trustworthy and we can trust him, and two, that he's always seeking after what's lost. And I think that's an important thing to remember because so oftentimes we're the ones who are in need of finding um, and we can can forget that um, as well. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. And the thing that came to mind when he said that was, you know, how many times have I tried to bargain with God Mm. and say, if only this time you'll help me, then I will never do this again or I promise I'll do that. And it's not a tit for tat. It's not quid pro quo. It's just, you know, you, he doesn't work that way. Right. Uh, what about you guys out in chat land? Let us know. Is there something that you've lost and were able to find or something that frustrated you um, and you weren't able to find it? Or worse yet, have you had some issues or things that have happened where you're wondering where is God and what is he up to? Uh, kind of let us know. And how, how do you deal with those things? So you can leave us a, a note in the chat or maybe some comments below as well to encourage one another um, as we go through this. Because we all go through those times where we, where we feel lost. And knowing that God is there with us, for us, seeking us um, is, is important. Um, so I have a cool lost item story. Oh, cool. Let's hear. I was in court in DC, which I don't do often, but sometimes. And I, when I do, I always take the Metro mm. and this time I had to take a lot of papers with me. So I took like my big clunky rolly litigation bag mm-hmm. and I had, um, looped my purse around it when I was leaving and I got on the Metro, went off on my next, like, um, changed my train and then, um, I was playing on my phone, and all of a sudden I realized I didn't have my litigation bag. Oh, no. Or my purse. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, wow. what am I going to do? Mm. Like, I have no idea. Wow. And then right then, like, by some blessing, we were above ground. Mm. My phone rings. There's a gentleman on the other line. He goes, 
um, is this Chantal? I said, yes. He goes, I think I found your purse. Your business card was inside, so I figured I'd give you a call. Wow. And he met me. Like, I got off the next stop, looped back, and he met me and gave it to me. Wow. And it was just the, that moment of just sheer panic when I realized mm-hmm. I had lost it. And mm-hmm. what am I going to do when I get back to the metro station? I can't get in my car. Right, like, right. Yeah, and all the work stuff. Wow. And all. wow. Yeah. That is awesome that the, the return of the item happened so quickly, too, that he actually took the initiative, went yeah. in your first, called you. In D.C.? A lot of, in DC nobody right? does that. <laughs> exactly. Like, that was such a God thing. Like, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> That's such a wonderful story of God's faithfulness and the faithfulness of that guy to do the right thing. Because so oftentimes people be like, oh, free purse. Right. There's all God, cool stuff in here. Litigation. Luckily, stuff. I don't carry money, but. <laughs> <laughs> but even yeah, but that's just that's just crazy. That must have been awful. Yeah. Uh, that that real. sense of loss when that happens, and like you said, I don't have my keys. I don't have. What am I gonna do? Thankfully, you had your phone. At least you have right. one thing with you. I always panic when I walk out and don't have my phone. I'm like, oh no, what? Mm-hmm. It feels like almost like you know everything is gonna go wrong if I didn't have my phone. And I remember growing up, we didn't have we cell didn't, phones. Yeah. I didn't get we my got first, around just fine, yeah. you know. I didn't um, get a cell phone until like. I think I was almost out of college. Mm. Yeah, I remember watching old episodes of Friends, and part of the fun is they're, they're trying to call each other and nobody's home, and they <laughs> right. can't reach each other. Like, Rachel's trying to reach Ross, and Ross is trying to reach Rachel and pick up and don't pick up. And that caused a lot of problems. We don't have that today. No. We don't have to worry about that. I don't uh, think my kids even know what a telephone, like a landline is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, what are we talking about? Um, so a phone is something you go on the internet with, right? And you play games on. It's not about calling people or, or communicating with people, is it? Mm, not what mm. I do. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you have your games and as long as you have your charger, that's the important thing as well. Because we know that if it doesn't have the juice, then you're in big trouble. can't play games anymore. Mm-hmm. And you can't communicate as well anymore for, for, for us. So, cool. Well, thanks for sharing those stories, especially the lost items. That's a, that's a, a tough thing. So one of the things that that Pastor Danny talked about is he said, we all have a built-in receptor to hear from God. And he said, we can turn it on or we can turn it off. And I don't know if that works like a cell phone. You know, we can turn our phone off or disconnect or or put it in airplane mode. But how do we turn our receptor on so that we can hear when God is speaking to us? Like, Chantal, what are some things you do um, to keep that receptor kind of tuned into God? So for me, it's it's not like a... In an instant, you can turn it on and turn it off. But I have found that when I'm really diligent on a day-to-day basis and spending time in God's Word and spending time in prayer and in mm-hmm. worship and in fellowship, it's really big for me, mm-hmm. um, with um, other members of the body, I find that I am so much more in tune with His voice mm-hmm. than when I get busy and I'm distracted and oh, it's gone like months be- between reading the Bible. Not that I've ever, mm. yes, I have. Um, <laughs> yep. Then I feel like my ears are numb to Him. Mm. So that regular day to day, going back to God's word, spending time praying. Uh, you mentioned meeting with folks in the body too. So I know that you and several others have started a new small group. Mm-hmm. Is that right? How does that kind of influence your ability to to stay in tune with God? So it's been really influential in my life. Um, it originally started as just sort of a fellowship group that we were doing on Sunday nights while our kids were in Awana because we had free childcare, mm. and um, and then over quarantine when everything was shut down due to COVID, we said, why don't we do like a real study and like actually, you know, Mm. do something. And so we started a study called Get Out of Your Head, which is focused on identifying and stopping the negative thoughts that we have Mm. and tunneling our thoughts through the mind of Christ, Mm. trying to train our brains to think the way that Christ does and Mm. see ourselves the way that Christ Mm. does. And it has been so formative for me. I think... I recognize now, like when I start to have what we call spirals, Mm. I recognize it so much quicker and I stop it. And it's really helped me also to kind of see some sinful um, thought Mm. patterns that I have that Mm. I've really been working on changing. Mm. And it's always nice, I think, too, to work on those together. Yes. So the fact that you have friends who are going through, you're like, I'm not the only one who goes through these spirals. I'm not the one who ends up in a place where like, man, how did I think that or how did I feel that? So that's great. That, that's really cool. And that's one thing that we encourage everybody at the Church of Covenant Park to get involved in the small groups, uh, to join a covenant group. And there are places on the on the website where you can do that. But that connecting to God and connecting to one another is, is such an important thing. Um, so it looks like we have a question out in the chat um, wondering, someone's asking how old you are, Isla. I'm nine years old. Isla's nine years old? Wow. I thought you were 10. 
Not until December. December? December is a great <laughs> month to be born. In fact, I think that's the best month to be born, Isla. That means you and me and baby Jesus all have the same birthday. She tried to be born on Christmas. Did you? She did. Nice. Yes. I refused to allow that to happen. <laughs> I said, no matter how cute you are, you're never going to compete with Jesus. So. <laughs> that, that's true. But it was still a nice Christmas blessing for you yeah, to have Isla in the, in the month of December. So I think that's really, uh, that, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Isla, did you have... Um, the person who asked how old I was, I think I knew them. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Well, feel free to say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Carrington. <laughs> cool. Good to see you guys. So, Isla, what about you? We talked about having a receptor to hear from God. Do you? How do you hear God's voice in your life? Sometimes when I'm in my room playing with my toys or reading a book or I'm on my phone, um, I hear the voice of someone calling my name um, and, um, and the voice of someone I love. Hmm. Um, but when I go downstairs, I'm like, does someone call me? And they're like, nope. No. Wow. So you think God is calling your name in a loving way? Just to remind you, that's awesome. That's really incredible that you can hear God so clearly uh, and letting him know how much he, he loves you and cares for you. What are the what are your brothers and sisters? What are your brothers say? You don't have a sister uh, when you say, hey, did you call my name? Um, can you say that again? So what do your brothers say if you say to them, hey, did you call my name? And they're like, no, or did they say something like, hey, you're hearing things, or? Um, um, they usually just say no. Hmm. Okay. So, but that's cool. That's really special that you can hear God's voice like that. I think a lot of times, you know, Jesus says we should all kind of have a heart of children uh, when we're seeking him. And that's cool that you can hear him so clearly um, and know that he loves you so much. I think that's really cool. Um, so another question for you, I know that it's during COVID things are different, but what are some of your favorite things about the youth ministry here at TCACP? What are the, the things that you guys do or things that you like to do with the other kids at church? I like playing the games in Awana. They're super fun. And sometimes when I was younger, I really liked doing the crafts. Mm. And snack time. Nice. <laughs> snack time is always the best time. You mean kids choir is not your favorite? I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so Chantel sings in our worship band as well and helps lead children's choir. So, and Isla, you've been a member of the choir. I think Weston's been a member of the choir. Yeah. Has Bennett also sung? No. <laughs> no. I know Bennett's really good at the guitar. So, hey, Bennett, yeah. if you're out there watching, I've heard you improving week after week on the guitar, and it's pretty cool to watch. And I heard Isla play the piano, too. Again, she said she's learning from Pastor Matt, so she's learning from the best. And I'm sure she's uh, uh, getting better and practicing hard, right? Yeah. Cool. That's really, really good. So, good. So let's talk, we talked about the lost sheep. Let's talk a little about the lost coin. Um, so I, I'm gonna ask this question, it's a little, a little silly one, but say you were walking down the road and you dropped a quarter, and then you had kept walking down the road and a mile or two later you realized you dropped a quarter on the ground. Would you, would you go back for that quarter? Before, I wouldn't, but after Sunday, I think if I lost something that could make a difference in the future, mm. I would probably go back and get it. Nice. Nice. So Sunday's message actually changed the way you were thinking about things that were lost and the value that we have of those. Yeah, I like came up with like a really interesting scenario. Like, why don't you tell them about yeah. how you might need it in the future? Yeah, so if I lost like a $1 bill, um, before I would just say, eh, it's just a $1 bill. Mm. But now I would probably go, oh no, what if I really want to buy this new toy, but I need one more dollar. <laughs> yep. Then you would have regretted not going back, right? Yep. You're one dollar short. When I was a kid, when I was your age, I always got confused because I was like, oh, it's like five dollars to buy the thing you want. And I'd be like, great, I have the five dollars. <laughs> and then you go up to pay for it and they tell you it's five dollars and 27. I'm like, where's the 27 cents? And then my parents started talking to me about tax. I'm like, what's a tax? This doesn't seem right. I got the five dollars. That's the stuff. They're like, oh, well, the government takes their cut from it. And it's like, what? That doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> I see Matt is out in chat saying there's a coin shortage, John. Stop <laughs> dropping all your change. I didn't even that, chuckle. That, that's funny. That is a good point. I should not drop. That's true. People today probably would be fighting over, it, especially if it's, it's a true. roll of quarters, <laughs> uh, and people are asking for exact exact change only. Um, 
During the, during the pandemic, I've been doing a lot of stuff with online and online payments, so I haven't carried much actual money around for a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, a good, that's a good point. Um, so, cool. So something Pastor Dan said in the message that kind of resonated with me, he said, you know, in the business world, 1% is an acceptable loss. Mm. And I think about that in my life in so many ways. I'm like, well, 25 cents, it's not worth my time or energy going a whole mile back to get, acquire it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, juxtapose that against mm-hmm. the way God views us. It makes mm-hmm. it so much more compelling. I mean, there's so many people, so many souls in the world. Mm-hmm. 1%. Yep. That's yep. a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But even one. Yeah. To him, that's everything. Mm, absolutely. I think God's attitude on what he treasures I think there's value in us because God treasures us. And the things that he treasure, treasures are so special to him and so valuable to him. It's almost like you can't put a price on it. And that's why he said, one coin is lost, I'm going after it. I'm going to turn over the whole house and I'm going to find that coin. One sheep is lost, I'm going to go after that sheep and I'm going to make sure that I bring that sheep home. And then later we have the parable of the lost son. And in this case, the son was actually a rebellious son. He said, you know what, dad, I wish you were dead. Give me my share of the inheritance, I'm out of here. And then he went and he wasted it and he blew it all. And he ended up with absolutely nothing. And then he was just struggling just to eat and live. And he finally realized through that scenario, he said, man, it was so much better for me when I was in my father's house where things were good. Maybe I'll go back and maybe he'll let me just be a slave in his house so that way I can eat something. You know, now I'm trying to get food that the pigs are going to want to eat and I can't even get that to eat. I want to, maybe I'll go home and maybe he'll let me come back. And it was so cool. Isla, do you remember the end of that story when the prodigal son comes home? So what happens when he comes home? So the father, he's really happy. He's rejoicing back with his son and they have a party and then the older son's like, this is not fair. I've been with you the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then the father is like, um, you were all I had. And then he got away and now he's back. Mm. So we have a lost son who's come home. Your brother is back. Let's celebrate. And I think that's so cool because the father could have been very resentful and very hurt because the, you know, the son basically said to the father, I wish you were dead, I'm out of here. And then he came back, but the father didn't hesitate, right? He dropped everything, he ran out to embrace the son, welcome him home, said, kill the big calf, we're gonna have a party. And I thought that was awesome. And then I think you pointed out very well, Isla, that the older son was kind of jealous. He's like, wait a minute, I've been here the entire time, I've been working my butt off, I never wished my dad was dead, I never tried to take this stuff and waste it all. I've been working so hard, where's my party? You know, and Pastor Danny said, don't miss the party. Come in. There's a celebration that's going on. Um, so I thought that was cool. I, I always like to think about who do I relate to in that story. So clearly the, the father in that story is the representation of God. But if you look at the sons, is there one of the sons that you relate to more than the other? Yeah, I relate more to the older son. Yeah? Because my parents always say I'm such a good healthy eater or I'm so healthy or I obey them the first time it's given and I would never Mm. ever think to leave my parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So are we recording this? (laughs) Yeah. I've heard heard your dad say many times that Isla is his little angel, his Mm -hmm. perfect child who does everything well and he's so proud of you and he's so thankful for you and you're such a blessing to him and and you make you make him smile which is really really cool um so that's good so you relate more to the older brother so is there other cases where you think maybe one of your brothers gets special treatment that you don't yes um sometimes when i do harder work and i get no treat or weston Mm -hmm. does a little bit of work that he's probably never really thought of doing before mm. um, and he gets a big treat mm. I feel really jealous you're like man <laughs> where's my treat I've done I'm daddy's angel I'm the perfect one who does everything she's supposed to kids have a keen sense of justice I'll tell you that mm. <laughs> so you do keep your eyes so you and how does that make you feel when that happens you, you said jealous um, sometimes I'm really jealous but now, as I get older, I just don't really think about it much. Mm. It's good to be able to let go of those things, I think. One of, the things, um, one of the things that my dad used to tell me is that life's not fair. 
Um, and I know that that's, it sounds kind of trite or cliche. It sounds like a saying that doesn't have meaning, but I think there's truth there, you know, and oftentimes um, even life in God's kingdom seems like it's not fair. But when I really think about it, what really touches me is it's not fair, but it's not fair because it's in my favor that it's not fair. Mm -hmm. If the last thing I ever want to say to God is, God, why won't you give me what I deserve? Because we know that sinners who have fallen short of God's mark, God's perfect standard, what we deserve is death. We don't deserve right. good gifts. We don't deserve to be welcomed home and have a party and have a family. And if you look at each of those stories, the story of the coin and the sheep and the son, in each of those cases, Jesus says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people. And he puts righteous in quotes because they're probably not really righteous that don't need repentance. So that word repentance, what does that word repentance mean to you, Ella? Um, repentance means to me when maybe a sinner um, or maybe someone who was um, who followed Jesus um, became a sinner and so um, do you remember what Pastor Danny said about it? Yeah. To repent means to change? Yeah, and then they change um, how they're thinking, and then they go back, and mm -hmm. they're kind of, I guess they kind of feel like how the son felt in the third story. Mm -hmm. They felt like they should have a punishment, but I don't think Jesus really never gives punishments. Mm. Yeah, Jesus is not about punishment when it comes to sinners who repent. He's about grace mm -hmm. and forgiveness. So I think the easiest way I think of repentance, repentance is kind of to change your mind, to turn around, to turn back and return home. Oftentimes when I was a kid, it was always like, say sorry. You know, if I hurt my sister or took her toy or did whatever, give it back to her and tell her you're sorry. And even in some ways, that's kind of the initial steps of repentance to say, you know what, I'm sorry. I screwed up. My bad but I wanna do better, I wanna change my mind, I wanna follow God. That's really what repentance is about, that changing their mind. And Jesus says there's rejoicing in heaven when one of us repents. And I think that's a good kind of perspective um, when we think about that. Um, um, yeah, so I, I think that's a good, a, a good thing. Uh, have you ever met anyone who's, who didn't need repentance? Have you ever met anyone like that? I know I have. Mm. And sometimes I'm that person, too. Mm. You know, it's like, I don't do anything. I don't commit sins. I don't do anything big or bad. But, mm. you know, when you really think about it, we're all the prodigal son mm. at some point in mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You know, and it may not be big things that you do wrong. But mm -hmm. like I said, you know, sometimes I recognize I have a, a sinful thought pattern. Like mm -hmm. I, I call it, I'm competitive. But really, mm -hmm. it's I'm being jealous. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, identifying that and trying to change that is, you know, yeah. how I've kind of tried to yeah. repent. Yeah, absolutely. I think in many ways we're often, we can be like the younger son and we can be like the older son. Mm -hmm. And kind of both of those are, are things where we really need to repent and turn around and say, hey, we, we need a better perspective or a better, mm -hmm. better thought here. Mm -hmm. I was looking out into the chat and actually Pastor Danny said some nice things about you, Isla, and so did... Pastor Matt, Pastor, Pastor Danny said, Isla, your actions may be like the elder son, but your spirit is so unlike his because you appreciate your parents and honor their wishes. So it's good that you honor your mom and your dad and you listen and you follow. Um, and he also says you have a keen sense of justice. Her mother must be a lawyer, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. And I think Pastor Matt said, dang, Isla has a more mature approach to injustice than I do sometimes. So thanks, Isla. You're setting a good example for a lot of us. Even the pastors in the church are, are learning something from you today. So that's really impressive. So thank you for sharing with us and thank you for teaching us. That good attitude that you have, I'm sure, rubs off on your brother, on your brothers and on your friends as well. So did you ever have somebody in your life, maybe on, on your gymnastics team or something, who thought, hey, they don't really need repentance or they don't need to say sorry um, for something perhaps that they had done wrong? Yeah, um, one of my teammates used to be really mean towards me sometimes, and I tried to talk to her about it, but she didn't see what she was doing wrong, but now she's changed and is she's very supportive towards me. Nice. And I think change may have stopped her change because she changed because I stopped reacting to her negative 
um, thoughts and acted only supportive towards her and so she started treating me the same way. Nice. That's really, really good. I really like that attitude as well. One, I like that you were brave enough to go talk to her, to say, you know what, what you're doing is not nice. That's not, that's not kind. And it makes me feel a certain way. But I also like what you said too, is I'm not going to react with her meanness with more meanness back. You said, you know what, I'm going to be supportive back to her. And I, that reminds me of what the Bible says, that we shouldn't overcome try to be overcome or overcome evil with evil, but rather we overcome evil with good. So you set a good example of how to show love and kindness to someone, even when they were not showing love and kindness to you. And that's something, again, we can all learn from. And that's a good attitude. And it's an important thing that I think Jesus always taught is to one, turn the other cheek, but two, to overcome evil and bad things with love. And I think that's an important thing as well. So thank you. That's a that's a great story. Also, um, sometimes my brothers are really mean to me and they tease me a lot. Yeah. And before I would just cry and cry and tell my mom that they had to go do something. Hmm. And she'd always say, what are they going to, if I tell them something, what are they going to do? They're not going to listen to me. So now I just stopped reacting to them. So again, it's good not to react <laughs> Because sometimes they just want the reaction from you too, right? They're going to pick on you. Doing, yeah. let's, let's pick on Isla and see what she says now. Ha, ha, ha. But it's good that you say, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm not going to give them the satisfaction. I'm not going to react the way that they want me to. That's really, that's really, that's really a good attitude. Have you, Isla, have you ever been rewarded even though you didn't deserve it? Mm, I don't really remember so, but maybe. Hmm. But you had a story about a friend, right? Who, mm -hmm. you want to tell us about your friend? Yeah, um, so my friend um, on my level four gymnastics team, she's not here now because she quit because she hurt her foot. Mm. Um, but when she competed her floor event, um, she forgot her routine in the middle of it. Oh no. But most kids would just walk off and just stop. But she listened to the music and um, then she found her spot um, where she remembered, and so she kept going. And she said to everyone, um, she didn't deserve that score. She thought she got she, a really good score. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, she thought she deserved a zero. Mm. But she kept going, so I think the judges added points. But we were all so happy for her. Nice. That's really good. And I think that's a good principle there. There's a good spiritual principle there too. Is sometimes things will go totally wrong and totally disastrous and we feel like we can't go on. And the best thing for us to do is to stand up and take the next step and do the next right thing and continue to press forward even though we got through a difficult time or something that was embarrassing or, or challenging. Like you said, forgetting her entire routine, that must have been awful. I can only imagine what that's like. And, and she had practiced, I bet, so many times. That must have been so frustrating. So do you do, what do you think, like gymnastics, is that a lot of pressure for you when you're in those competitions how do you like the competition aspect of gymnastics well while i'm in competitions it's weird because i don't get nervous that much nice. but in, during practice i get so nervous that mm. i mess up hmm. <laughs> Well, I guess it's better that way, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, the, the good thing is, is in practice, you practice so many times, and when it's game time, I was on it, and that's really good. That's really, really good. Is Bennett the same way? Is he good at competitions? Mm, not that I know of. I haven't <laughs> seen a lot of his competitions that mm. much. Yeah, they were on every other week schedule over the last oh, winter. So, so you don't get to see each was, other compete. Yeah, well, she used to come to a lot of his meets, but she needed to rest too because she was – so busy with her own. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I have one more question before we close. And, and this is the real kind of the heart of the bridge, right? We're always trying to apply. So we heard stories about the sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. How does that affect your day-to-day -day life? How does that change your aspects, your perspectives on God or teach you about yourself? How does it impact you, these stories of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son? By viewing his blessings as gifts, not something you have a right to or deserve. Mm, that's right. God's blessings are always a gift. It's not something we have a right to. It's not something we've earned or deserve. In fact, we get blessings because he's so good and because he's our father in heaven who loves us uh, so much. That's a great, that's a great word. Thanks, Isla. How about you, Chantel? How does this affect your day to day? So, um, two ways. One, 
as a parent, mm. I really relate to God in these stories because, like, as Pastor Dan said on Sunday, like, if you lost one of your four children, like, mm. one surely is expendable. <laughs> um, you know, you wouldn't stop going after them and mm. looking for them. You would turn the over the ends of the earth. And, you know, I have such a fierce and protective love of my children. Mm-hmm. And I know that comes nowhere near the love that God has for us. Mm. And to put it in that perspective, I'm like, nobody can love more than I love my kids. Yeah, yeah. But he does. Right, and so right. that just makes me feel so awestruck. Mm. And then the other way that I viewed it is if God calls us to love others the way that he loves us, Mm-hmm. then that means I need to love others that way. Mm-hmm. Not just the things that are precious to me, like my own children mm-hmm. or the things that I have a stake in, but everybody. And there's nobody who's too far gone or too lost for us to continue to pursue. Nice. Nice. That is such a good word. I was really encouraged when I asked Chantelle and Isla to be on the on the bridge this week. And I said, Chantelle asked what the, what the topic was. And I said, treasures and pleasures. Uh, and I think I was chatting through Ace, but Ace said, when he asked Chantelle what are her treasures, the first thing she said was her kids. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I think that's a really good thing as well. And I think also they're part of your pleasures as well. Because yes. when you see them grow and when you see them encourage and when you see them be a blessing, I think that's that's a great thing and encouragement as well. In fact, my mom said out in the chat that <laughs> Isla has the voice of an angel, a lovely young lady, so wise and so young. So that's really cool. So thank you both for being here. I think this is a great discussion about the lost things. Um, and I'm excited going forward, this series on the parables. So I think Pastor Paul is going to be preaching this coming week on the parable of the builders. And he's going to be talking about the fact that everything is built on something. So we're going to look for that foundation on which things are built. And I think it's going to be a great lesson and a great message. So this Sunday, if you're planning on joining us in person, uh, be sure to register online for the service so that we know you're coming. And of course, we'll have the online service as well on the TCACP YouTube channel, as we always do. Um, my favorite thing to do at the close of the bridge is actually to recommend a song and this is a good one it's called no one higher by north north point worship um, and this i think gives us the ability to kind of respond to god the way he treasures us we need to treasure him um, and we say our father creator you hold our hearts together there's no one higher than you redeemer defender our great and mighty savior there's no one higher than you you're always with us gracious to forgive us and by your power we've been set free there is no one higher than our god There is no one greater than you. Let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than you. I think it's a great message. We'll have a link to that song in the description below. Please drop us your comments. Let us know how the parable of lost things uh, has influenced your life in ways that you can encourage and bless one another. And we thank you all for being here. Thank you, and we'll see you next Wednesday on The Bridge. Have a good night, everyone.